Hi, my name is Emily Peck, and for my codification, I chose to look at FASB 805-740, and for this, I kind of looked at um, income tax and how that is affected with business combinations, uh, looking specifically at net operating loss, deferred tax assets, and deferred tax liability, so um, we'll be kind of focusing on those throughout the presentation. So before I dive into the problems with you guys, I wanted to go over the definitions of deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability in case we have forgotten or just aren't familiar with them. So the deferred tax asset is a deductible temporary difference to carry forward between gap tax expense and the IRS taxes payable. So basically, if we record our gap tax expense at a greater value than the IRS tax is payable, that difference is going to be the deferred tax asset, and that's going to be a good thing for us. Um, this amount, if one company is acquiring rate and other, it can be reduced if it is more than likely that some portion or all of the deferred tax asset will not be realized um, in the acquisition process. And we'll see this demonstrated later in a problem. And then the deferred tax liability is also a temporary difference between gap tax expense and IRS taxes payable. However, it's the flip side where the IRS taxes payable is greater than what we recorded at our, as our gap tax expense. So we're going to look at an example where company B is being acquired by company A and company B has some net operating loss carried forward. Um, so because of this, a deferred tax asset must be recorded at the time of the acquisition. And if the entire amount of net operating loss cannot be used, this would be if company A doesn't make enough income to cover the entire amount. A contract allowance account is required for any unrealized tax asset. So we're going to look at this box over here. And company B has a net operating loss carried forward of $200,000. So if we multiply this by the tax rate of $30,000, we end up with tax savings, i.e. a deferred tax asset of $60,000. However, company A doesn't make enough income, and so they aren't able to use $20,000 of it. So they have a net operating loss of $40,000 that they are able to put towards their deferred tax asset as a net, as we see in um, the balance sheet up top. So if you want to take this a step further and kind of reemphasize goodwill um, with this added deferred tax asset, we can look at the fair value of the net asset. So if we take the um, total assets of $900,000 minus our $140,000 in liabilities will end up with $760,000 in net assets. And then we'll take our price paid, which is $800,000 minus the fair value of our net assets of $760,000, and we'll have a goodwill of $40,000. And then if we want to take it a step further and look at how these would be recorded um, in their personal accounts. The deferred tax asset would have a debit of $60,000, while the deferred tax asset allowance, the amount that company A was not able to use, that is a credit of $20,000. And then we'll debit our Goodwill account for $40,000. So now we're going to look at a quick example of a non-taxable exchange and with these the book value is will be used for taxation purposes and the fair value is used for the financial reporting purposes so over here we have a chart of accounts and in the first column we have the fair value and then the book value and then the difference between the fair value and the book value and then um, in this column we will have to determine the de deferred tax assets or deferred tax liabilities and in order to do that, we're going to take the tax rate that we've been using of 30% um, times the difference of the fair value minus the book value. And then we will look at this nifty chart. Um, and for, So this first one, it says the fair value of the asset. If that's greater than the book value of the asset, then you're going to have a deferred tax liabilities and then so on and so forth. So we can run through a quick one. We'll look at inventory. So inventory fat fair value is $110,000, the book value is $100,000, so they have a difference of $10,000. So then we're going to go up here, so then we're going to take that $10,000, the difference, 
times the 30% tax rate and we'll end up with 3000 So then to figure out it, which way, if that's a deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability, we know that inventory is an asset and we know that the fair value is greater than the book value. So it's going to be a deferred tax liability. So we'll have $3,000 in deferred tax liabilities. So then the amount that would end up being recorded for all of this is this 115 and we'll use that to calculate our goodwill in the next portion. So we're going to finish out this presentation by looking at the uh, goodwill of the non-taxable exchange that we just figured out. Um, so we see our total assets of $860,000 and we have our total liabilities of $255,000, including our $115 deferred tax liability amount that we just calculated. So our $860 minus our 255 um, comes up with a $605 in the fair value of our net assets. Then we're going to take the price that we paid of $800,000 minus that fair value, and we're going to get a goodwill of $195,000. And we can see that. Uh, demonstrate on the good or on the balance sheet and then if we want to look at how these two accounts would be affected um, when these numbers are recorded we can see that the deferred tax liabilities are going to get a credit of $115,000 from up here and then our goodwill will be uh, debited for the $195,000 uh, thank you guys for listening to my presentation. I hope that it was um, helpful for you um, and informational looking at the codification 805740. Um, these are a list of the re resources that I used throughout my presentation and my research. Um, if you guys have any questions at this point, I would be happy to take them. Thank you.